the forwards, Vanganar, Lowe's and Fielden, Gartner, Peacock and Forshaw. And the substitutes, Price, Anderson, Gilmore and McDermott. The coach is Brian Noble. Terrific contingent of Bradford support here, hoping that Bradford will be back at Old Trafford. The Super League champions, of course, the Bulls. The Saints, though, let's take a look at their side and a late change here. Wellens is the fullback. Albert Gleason, New Love and Stewart, Sculpthorpe, and Sean Hoppy starts at scrum half. Until five minutes ago, Sean Long was named at scrum half. Apparently, he's turned an ankle in the warm up. Britt, Cunningham, Nickel, joint the captain Stankovic and Shields, the forwards. And the substitutes, Long is there taking his place on the bench with Ward, Yonkers, Hyam, and the coach, of course, Ian Millwood. And there is Ian Millwood, the St. Helens coach. Well, Trafford loses home next Friday, and Wigan awaits. It's Saints against Bradford, the top two after the 28 weekly rounds. And, of course, don't forget, St. Helens took away Bradford's two-year unbeaten sequence at Valley Parade. They were 50 points to 22 winners there on August the 16th. There'll be a bit of needle on show here. Don't worry about that. Scott gets us underway. This could be one of the great games of the season. Deacon tips the ball inside to Vinacolo. A great rush from the kickoff by Stankovic and Cunningham. Did well, though, did the wing of Vinacolo to get into the field of play. Crafted a little kick there by Skulltor all along the ground. And here now is Stuart Fielden. A good opening, three tackles. There is Sean Long on the bench. There is Sean Hoppy operating. Well named at scrum half. Will he play at scrum half? I think Bill Arthur has got news of the Sean Long situation. Bill? Well, he has gone over on his ankle in the warm-up. I'm assured that is the case. Of course, uh, he has been recovering from this knee injury now whether they've decided not to risk him early doors in this game and to let sean hoppy take the flat well that could be the cynical point of view but the official line is that sean long has got an ankle injury he will be available to come on later in the game very interesting ian millwood of course doesn't matter he says who he puts out on the field all the players know their jobs and they are varying and differing jobs as well but it looks from up here as though hoppy has gone to the wing Wellens has gone to seven, and that uh, Anthony Stewart has dropped back to fullback. But that could all change. Well, there's little doubt about that. Ian Millwood has done that throughout the uh, couple of seasons, and it has paid off for him. But will it tonight? It's a huge gamble. There's Wellens at scrum half. There's the kick down the line looking for Albert. It's a tester for Vinacolo. And nearly Albert pinched it off him, but they trapped him in goal anyway. The referee Robert Connolly just making sure that uh, he jumped from the field of play, which he did. Quite a few of the Bradford players just having a little chat with the official. But uh, he's the man that they're going to target, no doubt about that. He has had a quite a few problems with the high bomb, but uh, taking that will certainly lift his spirits. Well, this, of course, is a repeat of the 1999 Grand Final. And this is the fifth playoff meeting in five seasons, the third at Knowsley Road. St. Helens have won three of those previous four, including the grand final. And this is the way it looks head-to-head -head between these two. And uh, at St. Helens, the Saints have an overwhelming advantage against Bradford, but in the playoffs and Super League, but look at that, it's Bradford. And there's a knock-on, forced by Mike Forshaw uh, on Peter Shields. More mistakes. They proved costly, and you can see Shields was trying to offload, no doubt about it. Good positioning by Robert Connolly, the official. We saw last night that uh, Leeds kept coming up, giving away penalties, and coming up with so many mistakes. They never really got into the game. This is Robbie Paul, and uh, by the looks of things, a brand new hairstyle for the playoffs. It looks like he has a Malin streak across the top of his head. Well, he was our guest a couple of weeks ago on the midweek show, Eddie, and uh, I did mention it to him why he got it there, and he said he wanted gold on the finger and gold on his head. Fair enough. Penalty here to Bradford, high shot. Well, they've got to watch their discipline. No doubt about it, Chris Joint didn't miss. Peacock would have felt that. Paul Sculthorpe in the screen, his 250th career appearance tonight. The reigning man of steel, best player in the game in many people's view last year. 
and of course the decision for 2002 still has to be made. Lowe's at dummy half. Here's Van Gennar. Looked, looked a shade forward, did that. He was very late in offloading. What a big hit by Nickel on him, though. Lowe's again. They go right and find Robbie Paul. Robbie Paul dancing and almost getting through. Joint and Sculthorpe. Push him out wide. Good defence by Joint. Knew exactly what was happening. This is Scott Naylor now. Nickel with the tackle. Lowe's to Fielden! Fielden gets the first try! Fielden gets the first try for the ball's not given yet. Just check for obstruction on that one, please, Dave. He wants to check for obstruction against the Bradford Bulls. Just and tonight's video referee, by the way, is David Campbell. Checking for obstruction by a Bradford player when it came through. Oh, yeah, there is an obstruction there. I think it's Naylor. It looks to me as though Naylor has pushed Nickel out of the way. Four touches have run through, by the way. Is it Naylor? Yeah, I think it is. Scott Naylor definitely interferes with uh, Sonny Nickel. So, to my mind, this will be N-O-T-R-Y. Now, watch on your left-hand side of the screen. Naylor definitely pushes the man. So, therefore, he had no chance to get the field in. This will be N-O-T-R-Y. I cannot believe that the video referee will give this. There's Naylor. He definitely pushes Nickel. And you can see Nickel has no chance to make the tackle. And everyone's seen it, just like you viewers at home, here at this uh, stadium. Well, I don't know why he's looking again. He's definitely, well, he's just shielded him away. There's no chance that Nickel could make the tackle. Well, if this is given, he's trying to see whether Nickel is holding, but you can see there that Nail is holding him all the way. And he's trying to push him out of the way. Well, I don't know why they're taking so long with this. This has got to be no try. Well, that's your view, but David Campbell has taken a long, hard look at this, and the decision is... No try! He agrees, Naylor was obstructing Sonny Nickel. He couldn't get to the ball carrier, couldn't make the tackle. The try is wiped out, and Brian Noble looking down the line. He wants to see that again on the big screen. Well, he can watch it as long as he likes, but uh, Naylor knows that he's transgressed. Definitely pushes him away, and Nickel tries to get to him in the end. The joy on the face of Fielden is short-lived. And it's no try. You could lip-read the Saints coach in Millwood. And therefore, the penalty now goes to the Saints. Big let off. They're very slow, I must say, though, in getting their one line of defence sorted out. So St. Helens survive, an early scare. And this is Sean Hoppy, who was drilled to the floor by Peacock and Fielden. Sculthorpe and Britt, a lovely one-two. And Sculthorpe, great ball, then onto Shields. Grounded on halfway, good defence by Bradford. Beautiful run around there. And I must say, Mr. Connolly is not taking him back all that far. He's struggling to get back the 10. Pretty spiteful out there, no love lost between these two sides. It's a skinny 10 metres, there's no doubt about that. This is Darren Britt. Trying to get him back the full 10 now. And this is Wellens. He looks left and finds Sculthorpe. Great tackle from Naylor, ball and all. Couldn't offload their joint. Gets to his feet though, plays the ball to New Love. This is Sculthorpe with a crossfield kick. And this... Well, it was not backwards, was it? No, the knock-on, says the referee. Robert turnover. Cole. And yet again, not the best kick though by uh, Sculthorpe. They were aiming to get it right into the corner of Vinicolo. And uh, Big Leslie, who they're just tackling now, is in for a big night. Plenty of work. Saints offside. Right to you, sir. Brandon Preston takes a quick tap, and they're going to get Nickel for offside here. Quick thinking there by Preston. Back on the 10, crowd don't like it. And Jimmy Lowe's is asking the referee to put someone in the bin. Well, it's been the both for both sides, been the same, should I say, for both sides. I mentioned the fact the official was having a lot of trouble. No doubt about it, he went for a second bite with this fella. But he couldn't do anything else other than that, really, other than just let him through, and it would have been a possible try. This is Michael Withers. He's got Naylor on the overlap. Withers takes the tackle from Mueller. Bradford have started really hot. They're having all sorts of problems with the Saints' defence. This is Forshaw trying to skip and dance his way through. Shields and Nickel with the tackle. Waits at dummy half, 10 metres away. Deacon, the ball dipped. He managed to pick it up. Vandenaar! 
Good work from Nickel. Quick play of the ball, that's what's needed. Lowe's. Good defence from St Helens. Working overtime as a prop forward, Nickel. Not happy, James Lowe's. Well, he could have been penalised there. Oh, that's a bad mistake there. Robbie Paul came up with the ball, Zero. no one near him. And he drops it. Just had a little look. And now he's got them for offside. Tit for tat. McAvoy didn't hear the whistle. He was off. He thought it was try time. And he plenty to select from. There wasn't many got back. I think Fielding was on his own. There's a skipper. Holy Paul. Noise inside Nosley Road tonight is absolutely deafening this sellout all ticket crowd. And uh, five penalties in the opening seven and three quarter minutes. They could just uh, set the tone. To be fair, Saints will be quite happy because uh, they look a little bit disjointed in that defensive line. Bradford have made quite a few uh, slices through that defence. Well, this ten metres that Robert Connolly is keeping is about six. Two, clear! Well, they're normally taking them about 12 so they can take a step, but they're all offside, both sides. Cunningham on the run around. Wasn't going to get past his opposite. Jimmy Lowe says come here, but he still won't go Three. down. He does now. Stay. A good job Three. that uh, Cunningham got a forward roll in there. That could have been very dangerous. Here is Sculthorpe. It's good, Four. fierce tackling from both sides at the moment. Bradford looking a little sterner in that department than Saints. And the ball out wide, looking for Hoppy. Found the bottom of the uh, the wall over there. Well, it was a not right option to work the blind side they do that quite well but not the best pass from Chris John actually found the touch judge's ankle either way he'll be disappointed first golden chance for the Saints well, and Noble perhaps uh, a little bit perplexed over the fact that they've had one try disallowed but I think when he looks at the screen again he'll realize that it uh, certainly was obstruction Wait. Lowe's weights dummy half and you can see Danny there, Gartner. St. Helens, they're only about five metres back. Clear. Yeah, same for both sides. Isn't it? It's going to be a tough one, this. Mainly due to the fact that uh, the official won't allow either side to play open football. This is uh, Joe Vanganar, unbelievably left out of the Kiwi squad. That looked a touch forward, that pass from Lowe's to Fielden. Well, Fielden thought so, he nearly gave himself up. And this is Robbie Paul. And Robbie Paul is looking for support and a great tackle by Anthony Stewart. Had to be as well. This will be the last shot to get the kick, is it? It's with Deacon now. There's the dab down the line looking for Vinacolo. Darren Albert is there. Albert clears up, but at the expense of a goal line dropout. Super play there. Deacon just shoved it into the corner. As far as Albert's been in absolutely sensational form. That's a way to get behind the defence, but he read it well under a lot of pressure from Vinicolo. This is a break from the skipper. And once again, we've seen a few problems for this St. Helens defence. Millwood would be getting the message out. Come on, fellas, tighten it up. Doesn't look too concerned. Not yet, it's nil-nil, ten and a half minutes on the clock. This is Fielden, whose try was wiped off by Two. video referee David Campbell. I say the Bulls are again utilizing that very short pass, very close to the first man. Three. Quite happy to just hit it out with a big forwards Bradford at the moment. Lowe's to Robbie Paul. He looks left and finds Paul Deacon. Deacon got the pass away to Forshaw. Albert got him. This is Vinacolo. Vinacolo running straight at Stankovic with help from Gleason. The Kiwi is pulled down. Quick play the ball to Costin. Costin then in field looking for Robbie Paul. Robbie Paul is tackled by Skullfall. Last tackle here this set of six Lowe's surely he'll stab it through which he does is he onside? Could be a try for Deacon. he wants to see if he's onside was Deacon in front of Lowe's wonderful play though by the hooker Jimmy Lowe's outstanding here's a kick we'll see quite clearly he's onside this is try time what an effort from the hooker all the experience in the world little doubt Deacon is a good metre and a half, if not two metres behind. What a wonderful effort by the hooker, Jimmy Lowe's. He comes up trumps all the time, and it's Deacon that pops over the first four pointers. No doubt about it, this will be T.I.Y. Well, Deacon is the leading point scorer in the Super League this year, and he has four more. Paul Deacon, top 
scorer in both goals and points this year, but that's only try number six of 2002. Having all sorts of problems out there, this defence. See how one are moving up, some are hanging back. You've got to go in as a unit, and they're not doing it. You cannot allow too much space for this fella. They held off him, they thought he was going to go on his own. What a wonderful effort. See how he threw the dummy. But this line of defence from the Saints needs to be patched up very quickly indeed. Otherwise the Bulls will just run over them. Deacon then, the try scorer. And Deacon here now, the man to try and convert. Which he does. And the champions have a 6-0 lead here at Nosley Road over the unbeaten on this ground, St. Helens. There you can see one's going out, the rest are standing back. Thank you very much indeed. What a great combination. We often talk about the wonderful golden triangle between the halfback, the loose forward and the hooker. And it certainly worked for the hooker and the halfback there. Great try. Scofford with the kickoff, and uh, Vinacolo did well to field that. Wellens and Gleason leading the charge on him. They get him down 15 meters from his own line. Forshaw to Vanganar. He's been massive for Bradford this year. Missed the Kiwi selection, but he might well yet get in with Nathan Kalis being out. This is Stuart Fielden. Bradford with the early advantage, ahead 6-0. And it has been all Bradford so far. Well, it just shows you the element of giving away penalties, which Saints have done. Bradford also, but not as many. And then we get a situation whereby they've come up with the errors. Oh, and he's got the 40-20 here, I think, James Lowe's. The, he's hot. the referee shouted 40 as the kick was taken. They are running hot. Great effort from the hooker. Not normally noted for doing kicks like that. The short one that produced a try for Deacon, yes. But a 40-20 is probably the first he's done in his lifetime, isn't it? <laughs> Could be. Well, Brian Noble said coming into this match, he believed the Bradford Bulls were the underdogs. They certainly chew in tandem, the coaching staff at uh, Bradford, that's for sure. Robbie Paul who just passed the ball there to Michael Withers, says whenever Bradford play on the top of their game, they are unbeatable. There's a little bit of a difference of opinion between coach and captain, but whatever, it is 6-0 to the Bulls here. Although they've dropped the ball and Shields has it, and he offloads to Britt, who gives it to Wellens. That was dangerous play. Just shows you the tenacity of this defence is bringing up these uh, these errors. Offside now, Bradford, out wide. Well, he's got to start doing something, bring the two captains together. Well, if he just kept a, well, he's a big, the devil a big of a ten. Job. I know he is, but if he just kept a big ten, Russell Smith did in Australia. Okay. Referee wants the second guys. football over there, taken off before St. Helens are allowed to carry on. Remember the shimozzle that happened at uh, Headingley last Friday night. As Russell Smith said last night, don't put the ball behind <laughs> your back, please. Kieran Cunningham. Here's Peter Shields attacking the line, but Lowe's doing well. Quick play the ball, Cunningham. Wide to Skullford. Great ball, joint! Oh, he put that down and that was so close. And his coach knows it, and I'm sure the captain knows it too. Well, if you bomb things like that, what an enormous gap. Robbie Paul was nowhere. Look at that. Robbie Paul had failed to fill in, and this is what the reaction was. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. That was a try. Or words to that effect. He's bombed it. That was a try on a plate. And Chris Joint losing the football. His 400th career appearance, by the way, for Joint in the British game. Lowe's, dummy half. Well, we often say, Eddie, that you've got to take your chances, and that was very clear-cut indeed. You have to Beautiful. take your chances at this level, Steve-O. Certainly do. But it was a gift. There was just no one there. I know one, one player out there that was very uh, very pleased. Saints now. Robbie Paul. He's got to bring the captains here. Dan Deacon's taking a quick tap. Deacon 
on his way, he's got support for Fielding. What a tackle from Darren Albert. Super tackle there. Not done yet, though, the Bulls. Deacon on the bounce, kick to the corner. Tossed in. Tossed in for Bradford. No need to go to the video for that one. Brandon Tostin. He was relegated with Huddersfield last year. He is now on the verge of a trip to Old Trafford. Brandon Costin. And it all came about by the quick tap penalty taken by Paul Deacon. Quick thinking there. The man who got the first try of the game, but it's Costin there with the superb. Look at that, the defence is all at sea. And they paid a huge price, didn't they, with Joint bombing that try. Albert did his best to get back. But look at that defensive line. They are struggling. What a beautiful kick. It was three on nobody. Never mind three on one. There was just no one at home. Look at that. Who wants it? Costin does. They're running the show. Well, he's looking to complete a dream year. Brandon Costin with a grand final appearance and then probably providing Huddersfield return to Super League next year back to the McAlpine Stadium. Deacon, he created that with a piece of genius. Quick tap penalty, then the kick out wide. Now this conversion. He's got it. He's got that all the way. St. Helens nil, Bradford Bulls 12. The Bulls are the champions of the Super League and they're showing their true colours here. Well, this is amazing, isn't it? There was just no one at home. Never mind leaving the light on. The thief had gone over the top and dragged it and got it. Super play. But quick thinking from this fella. And how costly has that bomb try from Chris Joint been to the Saints? Uh, could, have been, could have been six all. Brandon and there Costin. you see it. I'm going to get this in in a minute. Brandon Costin must love this place. It's his first try since he scored here in June. Vanganar. A little well, crisis Saints. of confidence here for St. Helens at the moment. They've got to dig deep here. And again, utilising that very short pass. It's 50-50, borderline nearly all the time. And yet again, but it's working. Because once they've done all the hard work in the forwards, they're getting the link. And here we have Deacon again. It goes wide to Withers. And Withers off the side of the boot. And the that's out on the fall. First mistake for Bradford. Yes. Clarkie, Saints well, on the back foot, aren't they? Yeah, they are very early, though, at this stage. I think what you've got to notice is the fact that Bradford have had two chances in taking them both. We've just seen a 12-point minute, haven't we, where Chris Joint bombs it at the other one end and Bulls have the ability to go to the next and their other try was also scored from a goal line dropout and again the quality of the best sides able to exert that pressure and turn it into points that's what they've done with 12 against their name the Bulls nothing yet to show for St Helens and they've had lots of possession Bradford they've done well though in turning it into this 12 point advantage they have this is Nickel though now they're five meters away and it's here with Wellens while it goes to Scuffle and Scuffle gets the try that Saints were desperate for. <laughs> Terrific try from Paul Scalford. Again, the key man for St. Helens this year. And that could be a critical, crucial try. Great work. Looks nothing better than running down the arc or out wide in the centres, and he's done exactly that. Wellens did well to do it. And again, you've got to point the finger at Robbie Paul. He got away with it before. But I'm afraid Mr. Paul is all at sea in defence. Hesitating. Oh, he took the dummy. Brian Noble will not be pleased with the skipper. As I mentioned before, he left a huge gap where Joint eventually bombed that try, but not this guy. They will not throw the towel in. That is one thing from the St. Helens side. And there's a bit of an inquest going on here. There's a lot of people talking, a lot of players putting there for Penethin. And uh, Skullthorpe here, he's crowned his 250th career appearance with this try. How he'd love to slide this conversion over. 108 goals and a drop goal for Paul Skullthorpe. 
and a try in the playoff win against Bradford here in 1998. A success rate of 81%, but he's missed with that one. And that could be a costly miss as well. Importantly, though, the Saints are on the ball. Certainly lift them. Beautiful work from Wellens, but look how that defensive line. I said that Saints were having a lot of problem. Well, one man, Robbie Paul, is having a huge one. Look at that. To take the dummy like that and the reaction afterwards. Right. It's no good Great saying, goal. hey, come on, fellas. Yeah. I think there's quite a few going through the mind saying, hey, come on, you fella. Stay behind the kicker. Stay behind. Paul Scofford trying to rally the troops. For St. Helens as Deacon takes this kickoff. It's a short kickoff. Oh, read perfectly by Fielden. Into Withers. Well, St. Helens were standing deep. And this is another glorious opportunity for Bradford. Robbie Paul. Well, they were asleep, St. Helens. They were basking in the glory of scoring that try. And there's big problems for Fielden. He got a real big hit when he took that kickoff. Lowe's again. Looking for Deacon, was he? No. Tried to just ride the tackle and duck under himself. He's the ball's it. come free. Saints have it. On. No advantage. He, uh, he'll play the, the knock-on now. Yeah, he'll put the scrum down. This is a kick-off. And they, well, they went to sleep. Look at that. Who wants it? Oh, how many double-decker buses did you put in there? But look at the hit here. Oh, he felt it as well. Oh, it was Garner that uh, carried it on. Lowe's went close, and there he loses the ball. That's why Saints have the possession from this scrub. And they're in possession with Joint. Plays the ball to Cunningham. Here is Sonny Nickel. Well, that's amazing, you know, Eddie. I don't think I've ever seen a side allow such a vast area for someone to kick into. A chip over the top is from Scofield. Darren Albert is after this. Darren Albert flicks it in field. That surely was a knock-on. Hacked forward by Gleeson. And the referee will bring them back for that knock-off. No advantage. Neat little effort, though. Skullthorpe just dinked it over the top. See how the ball's spinning backwards? That means it usually just pops up, but it didn't on that occasion. He tried to flick it with the right hand back on the inside. It just didn't work. Gleeson had to put uh, foot the ball, but there was no doubt about the knock-on. So well, it's all happening. It is. Bradford in possession with Costin. Clear one. Stay. 24 minutes exactly gone. Penalty. And the back chatting. Well, that's silly play yet again. He's experienced enough as Paul Scofield. He just brought Saints back into this game with a wonderful try. And he made no attempt to roll away. And uh, he's leaving the official no other option but to give the penalty. Well, autumn has arrived in this part of the world. Oh, he touched that. That'll be head and feed. Head and feed to Bradford. Saying autumn's arrived as uh, we watch this replay from Albert. He did get a flick to it. The uh, the rain is uh, is tumbling out of the sky, and it's a very grey landscape around Nosey Road. Nickel goes off, and Barry Ward comes on for the Saints. Now Barry Ward does have the tendency to lift his teammates. Well, that's the reason why Ian Millwood has just thrown him on. He needs something out there because uh, they're just a little bit at stray. And I'm sure that Brian Noble also has got the message out to his skipper, say, hey, come on, it's going to be a bit tighter in defence. This is Anderson, first touch since he came off the bench. It's all about the big boys. Lowe's. Showed it to Fielden, gave it instead to Peacock. Peacock has to take the tackle from Barry Ward and from Darren Britt. Lowe's again. Deacon. Oh, he's cutting them to ribbons with these kicks. And that's going to be a goal line dropout. Darren Albert was taking no chances. Well, it's clever play. Deacon's reading the game exceedingly well. Get the roll on, get the couple of sets of six in succession. And as Eddie has just mentioned, creating all sorts of havoc for the same side. Good run by the big fella, Anderson. Well, the ball's in possession and in charge of the match on the ground where they've lost for the last three visits. And they haven't actually won here since March 2000, 32-10. It turned out to be Ellery Hanley's last game in charge of St. Helens. 
when will they bring Sean Long in? Deacon, Robbie Paul, oh, that was forward. Oh, surely. That was forward a mile. Well, they've got away with quite a lot of them, and that, as you can see... They've got the knock-on now against them. Well, justice has been done. And he lost control of it, did Peacock. It'll be very, very slippy out there now. Yeti has just mentioned the rain is uh, teaming down. Robert yeah, Connolly, the official, says... Uh, Second Loose forward. Keep it quiet, boy. Ooh, that that was forward, forward well. too, and it was. Can't believe that. Why on earth would they want to do a set move on your own 10 metre line? It may look pretty and you may get away with it, but safety first. It looked dodgy, didn't it, that first one? So the scrum now goes down same place, and this time it's Bradford heading feet. There are the conditions we're having to endure, at least the players are, for sure. A very dangerous Bradford with ball in hand, I must say. Lokes with us. They're Back off, to Fielder. They're offloading well in the balls. They are controlling this game. And Lowe's well. Oh, first knock on. He'll play the first. And it was against Lowe's the first. Push the face and went forward. They said tell his knock on. Scrum down. Say it's at a ball. Well, well we neither was... side wants it. Well, it's slippy out there, Eddie. But I still can't understand what on earth St. Helens were thinking when from the base of the scrum. Up the other end of the field. Yes. Not on your own 10 metres. Oh. Oh, oh. Penalty. Penalty. Ooh, very off side of the scrum. Only just as well. And they don't like it. Lowe's had a real old go at the official Robert Connolly. Well, I reckon that's clear. That should have been play on. Oh, well, they're hanging on. They're hanging on by uh, skin of the teeth here, I'll tell you, the Saints. That's a big hit from Forshaw. Oh, oh there yeah, it is. Striking. It's Anderson striking. Yeah. Cunningham now. Can he lift this team? That's sort of a run well. Here is Britt. Oh, big hit. It just locked the ball. Britt they couldn't hang on. They don't need to do this, Eddie. They haven't had much yeah, possession as it is. <laughs> and it was a good hit from the man who we often call a tackling machine, the Australian second row, Daniel Gardner. Edgy, through please. a lot of work. He'll be happy. Well, four. He would have been Stay. happy with that uh, at any time during this game, never mind the first half. Robbie Paul grounded on halfway. Anthony Stewart. Well, time's in possession, nine, and only three completed Dude. sets by St. Helens. Says it all. That is not the sort of stuff that Ian Millwood will be terribly happy with. This is Anderson. Good hit by Wellens as he received it. And it's defence like that that would lift the spirits of their coach and the side. Lowe's good ball, though, to Forshaw. Barry Ward was the man with the tackle. Again, that short little pass from the dummy half. Lowe's is controlling things out there. Good ball, he got it away to Gartner. There's some fierce tackling going on. Now then, this will be a high one, surely. And Deacon puts the high kick in. Coming off the wing is Hoppy. Hoppy has missed it. It's play on. This Back is, to six, isn't this it? is Peacock. Flicks the pass. Referee hasn't wiped the tackle count down yet. He should do now. No, he hasn't. Oh, I can't believe that, but neither can the coach, Brian Noble. I'm sure Hoppy got the fingertip to that. Oh, dearie me. Or was it Naylor? Oh, I'm not so sure. Hoppy to me. It hits Hoppy's uh, arm and the leg. Well, Hoppy certainly went for it. Did he get it? I'm not sure. And neither was Robert Connolly. That's why St. Helens had the possession. Oh, what on earth are they doing? Shields are floating straight to Gartner. Here is Fielden. And Fielden standing and getting it away to Lowe's. Here's Robbie Paul now. Well, Saints are playing as though they bought grand final tickets. Never mind what to get there. Stay. Robbie Paul, that was a hefty challenge on him. He felt that. Here is Anderson. Much better, though, from Two. Saints. They've got to really lift the game. That's a big, strong defence. That's what they need. But again, we see Bradford quite happy due to the short pass. Fielden's having a wow. And so is Lowe's. 
Deacon's not doing bad either behind them. And there is Lowe's. Here is Deacon. This is Peacock. He offloads. A little knock on. No, no knock on. For sure. He got it right with the official. Lowe's again. Come down the short side to Withers. A dab through for Bonacolo! Oh, a try for Bonacolo! He's got it, don't worry about that. He's definitely got a hand to the ball. That's no problem as far as I'm concerned. It's the onside. Was he in front of the kicker? I mentioned the fact that James Lowe's is running the show here. And Withers gets the ball to him. He's onside. This is going to be try time, surely. There, he's not even in the picture. It's on a slight angle away from being squared on. He gets a hand to this. And the Volcano will make the Bradford crowd erupt. And why not? The kicking game from Bradford has been superb. Deacon it was before, now it's with us, T.O.Y. And it is to Vinicolo. Another man not included in the Kiwi squad, but he's very much in the Bradford squad. Ten tries for the year now for Vinicolo. Two playoff games for Canberra in 2001. One loss against the Roosters. Well, he's just orchestrating everything out there is Jimmy Lowe's. And that was a great effort from the winger. He's a big lump of a fella. And it takes a lot of time to get to, to get moving. But look at the kick yet again. And these are wonderful tactics. Even on a dry pitch, but on a white one. He knew that if he dived, he'd get there. He knows that he scored. Consternation in the St. Helens uh, pack. And there you see Chris Joint laying down the law and rightly so and look at the rain coming down and with a lead like this there's a big hill to climb for the Saints on oh, Deacon's kicking like a dream 18 points to four the Bradford Bulls Tetley Super League champions world club champions showing their true colors tonight what a wonderful finish it fully deserved it Withers this time with a kick so important in this game now. You mentioned the fact, bring up the errors, and you won't win the game. We've already seen the stat where St. Helens have only completed sets of six on three occasions, and it's hurting them. Long way to go, though. Well, at the moment, after 33 minutes of this match, Bradford are on the way to Old Trafford, and Saints are caught offside, and there's another quick tap. The referee wants a word with the captain, Chris Joint. I was just going to say, Bradford are on their way to Old Trafford. St Helens are on their way to a meeting with Wigan here next Friday. And Wigan have beaten them this season three times already. Well, someone should have a little word with uh, Vinicolo. That's uh, on two occasions he, he patted the referee. We can do without that, thank you. Well, it's grand final night weather, traditionally. It does uh, tend to team down at Old Trafford. It is pouring down at Nosley Road, and Anderson in possession. Well, it's, the balls. Uh, it's certainly sorting them out, Bradford. They really are in full control. Dickon. Great ball, and it's stuck as well. Fielding and joint. A little uh, scrap. For sure. He offloads. It keeps going, here is Fielding again. Fielding's having a huge game. So much strength there from the youngster. Lowe's, Deacon, another kick, could be another try. Gartner! Gartner has come up with another. They're being kicked to ribbons. They are being kicked to ribbons, St. Helens. I think he's offside though, is he? It's hard to say from that angle and it looks all right yep that's try time Again, what John, wonderful Dickens tactics from Brian Noble, Noble in the Bradford side up. with us a few moments before Deacon yet again fantastic play just ideal the tactics and Gartner will get the TRY This is all you need to do. 
He can break down any defense at any given time. Well weighted. And what a finish. Did everything right. The Aussies know the way to the try line and they know how to scoop up the ball as well. Control. Two hands round the football. And the Bulls, they are just absolutely giving Saints a lesson in rugby league. Deacon, this one of the more simple conversions he's had, and he doesn't make a mistake from the touchline. He won't make a mistake from there. 24 points to four. Well, this huge crowd at Nosey Road, the majority of them from St. Helens, they are shell-shocked, but they are the Bradford Bulls supporters. And I think they're booking their places and making their plans to get to the ticket office tomorrow to pick up the Old Trafford vouchers. And they'll be on their way. Well, it certainly looks that way, and they fully deserve it. Referee has stopped the clock here. He wants a word with Stuart Fielden. And Fielden was right back behind the post at the other end. Well, they had a little bit of a spat with uh, the Saints skipper, Chris Joint. Did I say kipper? Rather the skipper. We brought to my attention by the touch judge after the tries with verbals, shoving and pushing. It's been daunting. Off you go, please. All right. All right. Yes. Right. Well, they've been talking and pushing and shoving the two Great Britain internationals, Paul Sculthorpe of St Helens and Stuart Fielden. And the referee allowing Fielden to get back in position for the kickoff, but uh, well, that's the first mistake from Withers. And boy, oh boy, did they need it. They know that they've got to get a try before half-time. They need something to lift their spirits, something that they can just glean a little bit of uh, positive thoughts at the half-time. Steve, well, we are talking about the Saints, you know. This is the game plan. <laughs> they give the opposition a false sense of security, maybe. Well, you can see the driving rain that will be in the faces of Saints in the second half, so it won't help them. On the bounce, Wellens collects. And here is the Tim Yonkers. Can they complete another six? It's a big question at the moment for Saints. Barry Ward. And we've seen nothing from Kieran Cunningham. We thought he was going to be the key, not when he runs from dummy half. And this is Scottlop again. Good tackling, and there's a St. Helens played in back play down. It was Stewart. He's quickly up, though. Here is Wellens. It's amazing when you, you get this change just before the start of a match for St. Helens. It, it disrupts them completely. Shields. Solid defence. Sean Long, of course, named in the side, now sitting on the bench. Wellens wide to Sculpthorpe. Sculpthorpe, good ball to Chris Joint. He's joint over the line. No, he's no, held he's up short. Great defence. Absolute superb defence from Withers. Joint could not believe that it didn't get over the line. Play ball, yes. Oh, that's it. That's fine. It was Paul actually. Better defence there from the skipper on that occasion. It had to be. That was try time yet again. It'll be up the jumper time for Bradford. Five big hits and then the big kick, surely. Deacon. That's three of them gone. Four short at dummy half. That's four tackles gone. Costin, dummy half. What a first half this has been for Bradford, Phil. Yeah, listening to Brian Noble in the week, he said that he had felt the Bradford Bulls hadn't played well all year against St. Helens. It hadn't been one of the better performances when they came up against the St. Helens side. I think at the first half, you'd have to say this is one of his best. They've been clinical in attack. But even if you're a newcomer to rugby league, you will realise that it's very much a territorial sport. And Bradford have had the advantage of spending most of the match attacking the Saints line when they've been down there. They've shown us really how to score tries and three of those kicks. It's very difficult to wait and place that kick into the in-goal area when there's nobody in front of you. But when a 15-stone guy is sprinting at you, trying to knock you over onto your backside at high rate of knots, it's even more so when the kicks from Bradford have just been first class. They have indeed. Entering the last minute of the first half, what would Saints give for a good kick? Wellens tried to put one in then. This is Vinacolo now. Good positioning there as well from the winger. Anticipated the kick, they got back. Lows to Costin. And you talk about the kicking game, I've already mentioned the fact that Saints have been running into the wind. 
That means that Deacon will have a field day in the second half. He'll utilise it, something that Saints haven't done in the first 40 minutes. Well, no Tommy Martin, no Sean Long, of course. Kickers in general play in chief, I suppose, those two. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Ian Millwood had made such a big gamble that he won't even bother using Sean Long. That ball's come out, and this is Stankovic. Last throw of the dice, seconds ticking down. And here is Wellens, and this now is Gleeson. He's got Albert outside him, he's gone inside though, and for sure, and Deacon will complete the job on him. Last 20 seconds of the first half coming up. It's with Jonkert. They've got to go for the kick, they're going to run out of time. It's with Skullfor. Oh, that was forward a mile. Wellens just dropped it, and it was picked up gratefully by Deacon. Last five seconds of the first half, Bradford will turn round with a 20-point advantage, and there it is, half-time siren, and booze around this stadium, but this fellow, Stuart Fielding, is led by example, with Deacon alongside him, and Lowe's, they have smashed St Helens to pieces. Only the Paul Scottfall try for the Saints after 22 minutes. Bradford have hit them for four big ones. Deacon, Costin, Vinacolo and Gartner. Bradford ahead, 24-4 at half-time. Brian Noble's win ratio of 80% after two full seasons in charge of the Bulls looks in pretty safe hands just now. The Bulls are in total control. St. Helens side, and the, the kicking game from Bradford in that first half was supreme. And I think we'll get exactly the same in the second stanza. That was the first touch for Chris Joint, and he tipped the ball inside to Barry Ward. We're underway. Bradford are 40 minutes away from Old Trafford. Long has the hopes of St. Helens on his shoulders. Great defence, though, from Peacock and Robbie Paul. No way through for Peter Shields. Long again. Delayed oh, all. That's a mistake again. First up coming by St. Helens. Then it came up for Bradford Guy after the Bradford Guy caught it. It's not their night, Eddie. Doesn't appear to be. Paul Newlove, of course, formerly with Bradford. Coming up with the first mistake of the second half. And good work, though, by Scott Naylor, the centre. But right in the face of his opposite, Paul Newlove. Big grin on the face of uh, Jimmy Lowe's as he packed down there. And why not? He has controlled things wonderfully out there. Well, oh, that was forward a mile. Well, he knocked it on anyway, Costin. The referee's blown the whistle. Yeah, no advantage. Oh, well, he's not having the best of nights, though, to be fair to Robbie Paul. He came up with a superb tackle late in that first half, prevented a try to Saints. Well, that's a pretty poor effort there by the skipper. So that is a, a mistake apiece in the opening minute and a half. With us all over the top of Wellens. Oh, surely they're offside there. They've been eager both sides, and he's, he's had a heck of a job, hasn't he? Robert Connolly. The crowd are trying their best to do that, and could that have been a flop from field? And perhaps so. Well, it could have been. Here is Skullthorpe attacking down that right hand channel. Skullthorpe. Well, he's a man that's trying his best. He was the only one that really could stand up and say, well, I've been counted in the first 40. Nice movement here. Long again gets the ball away to Wellens. That's knocked on by Scott Naylor. They bring the scrum down here. But uh, Sean Long involved in that movement. And that gives St. Helens some encouragement. Not the best offload there, though. And you can see there that they were looking for support, and it wasn't there. They're, they're all at sea at the moment. They're lacking confidence. Need offload there. But this scrambling defence from uh, Bradford has been superb. Scullthorpe wide to Albert. Good tackle by Leslie Vinacolo. He almost tackled him twice. Wellens. Stankovic. Oh, Flying up. hit by Hitfield. What a big game he's having. Scullthorpe will attack the line here. He had Junkers in support, took the tackle. Three gone, three left. Well, that's what we need, more running from the dummy half. We haven't seen any from uh, Kieran Cunningham as yet. Oh, oh dearly me, I've mentioned his name, and i put the mocker on him. I think he knows that this is not the night. Sorry, he says to his teammates. 
You see, he just took his eyes off the football at uh, the critical moment. And a little glance. It's, uh, it's been effective, though, the way that the Bulls getting into the face of the opposition. They've just allowed St. Helens no room to move whatsoever. This is for sure for Bradford while he takes that tackle. Let's go to Bill for the news from what was said at halftime. Well, Eddie, the key word in that St. Helens dressing room was completion because without a, a complete set of six, St. Helens are going to go nowhere. And that's the message, really, from their coach. Pretty simple, but it, it's absolutely what they've got to do because they've just got to get their game together and try and build a platform from which to start their fight back. And as yet, there's still no sign of that happening. For the Bulls, coach Brian Noble just wants them to maintain concentration. The danger for them is that they're in a comfortable position and they could just let it slip as they have done there. Yes, Deacon had the ball dislodged in the tackle by Yonkers. So Saints have got the opportunity here, and this is new luck. And uh, Chris Joint was talking to the referee then. Well, Robert Connolly, he tripped trying to get back the 10 metres, which allowed Bradford to stand only five. Cunningham, 20 metres out, he is long. And long goes for the gap. Good tackle, low down by Robbie Paul. Was it ever? And Lowe's did well just to make sure he couldn't offload. Wellens. Bradford right in the face of St. Helens, though. Four tackles gone. Two left. Joint. And Joint goes on his own. Strong defence again from Bradford. Last one here. Long stabs the kick to the in goal. That's a try. It's a try, is it, for Cunningham? He certainly got there. Did he ground it all right? Well, they've taken a leaf out of the book that Bradford showed in the first 40. The kicking game was supreme there for the Bulls. Now the Saints have got to it. He's onside. No doubt about that, they'll have a little look to see whether he gets it down perfectly, and I think he does. What a great effort. Oh, I'm not so sure. Oh, I'm not so sure on seeing that. Well, I don't think... I don't think cheer when they saw that. I don't think they'll give this as a try, Eddie. We saw Gartner do something similar in the first half. I think this is going to be no try. Let's see. Dave Campbell's decision is a try. Now then, cue the fight back. I wonder. Cunningham with his ninth and a vital one too. Well, he made up for the mistake earlier. And like I said, the kicking game is so important, isn't it? And they, they got for the mapping a little bit slow to get back there. Didn't anticipate. They thought perhaps Long was going to be the man that would just chip through or maybe throw the dummy, but Cunningham, he has repaid his coach. Didn't do much running in the first half. Looks like this could change it. And the conversion from Skullport from Bang in front. Cunningham's try. A kick through again, unlocking the defence. 24-10 now. And Saints with a vital early try, start of his second half. Well, that's what they needed. And they got away with it, mainly due to the fact there, we remember that it was Cunningham that came up with the error. But he has really repaid his side. Beautiful combination. We were admiring the way that it was the Bulls that were controlling things. Could that twist the game? We know that they come back kings, aren't they, the Saints? Well, I mentioned it in the first half. I said it might be in the script. Oh, Barry Ward has lost that. Well, that won't help matters. He does carry the ball rather awkward. See how he uh, really should have switched the ball. I don't know why he, he opted to rip it into the right hand and then try to charge it away. You really should carry it in the left and then use your right shoulder. Got it all wrong then. Deacon feeds for short. Looping past to Paul. Wide it goes to Withers. And Withers. They can't get him down. Back it comes this way to Gartner. Simplicity has got to be the key for Bradford. Just slowly but surely get back into this game. Then I'll be back to six. Knock on. Oh. Well, the dice is going against the Bulls. I think that's a bad decision by Robert Connolly. Yonker's got a fingertip to that. Yeah, without doubt. Bang. That should have been a knock on the other way. And he has given it against for sure. Well, in such moments, well, you need a little bit of turn. luck. Certainly running their way at the moment, Saints, but look at that defence. Come here, come to Danny, bang, bang, bang. Fielding has been absolutely superb out there in defence. This now is 
St. Helens looking for something with Yonkers, who plays the ball to Cunningham. It goes wide to Sculthorpe, and he will hoof it downfield. Good kick too, and Sculthorpe is leading the chase. Sculthorpe will put everyone on side here, and he'll trap him in goal with us. Sculthorpe leading the way again. What a kick and chase, but we've got to say that Michael Withers, he was extremely slow to get to that football. Maybe he was trying to perhaps just elude the way that uh, Sculthorpe came to him, trying to use the post. But look at that, what a great effort. He picked that up with us and he looked and he saw Sculthorpe and he said, I can't believe it. Well, he better believe it. There's the drop out to halfway. And Darren Albert to run this ball back. Well, they never got consecutive sixes in that first half, Saints. Now they have. And that really gives them a roll, and for once, you just sort of sense that Bradford's defence is not as eager to get into the faces. And they're offside now, and Long's going to take a quick one, which he does, and Long will score. get there! Sean Long has scored for St. Helen! Try is given by Robert Connolly, and is the unimaginable about to happen? Sean Long, the catalyst for a comeback, I wonder. Bradford can't believe it. So many times they've had the victory just taken away in the last seconds. Remember a few years ago, it was the vital seconds when Chris Joint scored. Well, Long has turned this game on its ear. They were caught napping with the Bradford defence yet again. It was Long's kick that provided the try for Cunningham and the quick tap. Beautiful dummy yet again. Robbie Paul went out wide. He took it and Long says, give me four. This is a vital two points. Just a bit. But Long with a try. Named in the side. Then put on the bench because he turned an ankle in the pre-match build-up. Doesn't look like there's much wrong with him now. And Sculthorpe, this is a critical kick. No problems. The fight back is gathering pace. 24-16. Who would have believed it? He wouldn't, I'm sure. But he knew the fact that you can see. Look at Robert Paul. He's going out. He's taking the dummy. That's the second time he's done that during this game. Steve, oh, that is Sean Long's first try. And Ian Millwood just celebrates it quietly. His first try on this ground since March since the start of the season. He won't worry about the last one, Eddie. He'll just be thinking about adding to the one he's just scored. But a different side with Long, and indeed, we shouldn't forget the other absentee from the engine room of St. Helens, Tommy Martin. Well, we thought, didn't we, with, you know, what sort of games Ian Millwood were playing with the fact that, uh, did he twist his ankle or was it just kidology? Either way, it's boosted them and all of a sudden, they're on fire, the Saints. They are. The wind is in their sails now. It looked a lost cause, but suddenly, in the opening ten minutes of this second half, St. Helens had hope. Look at the brakes. And there's the kick from Long. And McAvoy has got to turn, and he's not interested. Wisely lets it run over the touchline. But Long is the man. Sure is. Well, I anticipated the fact that it would have been Bradford that would have just kicked them to death in the second half. Maybe it's better to play into the face of the wind. Well, I suppose with a hairstyle like that, it doesn't really matter, but uh, <laughs> he's certainly just turned things around, and you just get the impression now that Bradford just trying to slow things down, They're doing a substitution now, trying to stop the momentum that uh, Saints have got at the moment. Bradford, of course, were at Old Trafford last year. They're aiming to get there this year, so are the Saints. The Rugby League information line is open for business in the morning. 0113 2329311. Also there, the news of the New Zealand uh, tour, which has the Great Britain tests on the agenda in November, and also that match against the Welsh at the Millennium Stadium on November the 3rd. It's a 40-20, but it's not going to make it. So, plenty more rugby league to play between now and the end of this particular season. Great tackle there from Robbie Paul. 
There's a bit of rugby league to be played between now and the end of this match. And James Lowe's going a right go. It must be at the referee. Well, it won't be at his own players, and that will not help their cause. You can talk to a referee as long as you want, say what you want, but it won't change his mind. He's the boss, he's the gaffer. Down the short side goes Cunningham. That's the third time we've seen Cunningham run. He said they were offside. Yes, That's what he, he was trying to milk the penalty. He was asking for offside, definitely. Whoops! There's a mistake from Robbie Paul. Here is New Love. This is Anthony Stewart. And Anthony Stewart scores. Anthony Stewart scores for Saints. The big blunder came from Robbie Paul. And Saints were on it in a flash. The referee will have nothing to do with James. Protestations, and suddenly, well, I cannot believe what we're watching here. But he can't really. We've often said that sometimes the half time comes at the wrong moment, but sometimes, if you're a Saints fan, it certainly has come at the very, very right moment indeed. And and poor old Robbie Paul. Now, what's the what's the first tackle here from Robbie Paul? And he loses it. Now, Stewart loses that ball it wasn't seen by the official now i think it was offside that's the reason that uh, lowes was having a real old ding dong with robert connolly and perhaps he had a case there because the man who was offside just leisurely get out there with us at no chance they got the overlap out wide well finished by stewart but controversial try i really feel that uh, wellens was offside for that kick and he applied the pressure, and that's the reason why the Bradford side, they're none too impressed, and I think they've got a right to complain. But you take your chances, and the official has allowed it, but I'm afraid it's a boo-boo, both at one end, when Stewart knocked on, and when we've seen that Wellens was offside for the kick. Not spotted by any of the officials, he won't mind to this fella. Scofford has got to kick this, and he has... 22. This is just unbelievable. It sure is. And he will be absolutely spitting chips, and I mean it, because he knows, like everyone else that will watch it, that Stewart knocked off, Fischl didn't see it. Wellens was offside, I feel, when Sculthorpe dinked the ball over the defence. You ride your luck sometimes, and it's certainly shining on Saints at the moment. It is. The Bradford swarming forward again. Well, on the kickoff. I wouldn't have had a bet on Saints coming back into this game, Eddie, with your money. Thanks very much. Oh, oh. he's come up with a mistake yet again. Barry Ward losing it under the pressure of the challenge. And again, we see he oh, the ball awkward. Smashing tackle from Ward, though. He said, I'll get my own back, do something positive. Deacon wide to Gartner. Ooh, that was pretty high there as well. Stankovic. Or Shaw. Well, it's lining up now. I mentioned the fact that composure would be the key for Bradford, and that's what they've got to do now. Just get back into the same routine, the short pass to the forwards, Lowe's controlling things. This is Daniel Gartner, eventually Gleeson and Stankovic wrestle him to the ground. Lowe's the dummy half, will dab the ball and goal, and St. Helens will sweep up. Well, Dan Albert happen. was there. Quick thinking yet again. Pandemonium. <laughs> it sure was. I think it was a boot actually that got to it first. Yeah. It was. Wellens. Wellens. But neatly the play yet again from James Lowe's. And Wellens uh, comes to the rescue. What a game. Who would have thought it? Nobody. Nobody would have thought this was possible. And there's still plenty of time. We're not in the final quarters yet. This has to be a long kick. And a good chase. Clarkey, what on earth has gone on, gone on in that dressing room at halftime? Well, I think we're just witnessing a magic moment for St. Helens, or more probably appropriately, a 15-minute period. It's come out 18-0 so far in the second half. They're running from dummy half. Tim Yonkers is taking the ball up when, and really they are looking sharp. But maybe this is the turning point. Bradford, very unlucky. Controversial decision against Mike Forshaw, I remember, and then the kick also with a knock-on. But, hey, Saints tried the luck. They do, and now it's Bradford looking to 
find a hole in that St. Helens defence. Well, that's a mistake there from Lowe's. Oh, it's Lowe's back, to six. back to zero in the tackle count. Lowe's to Brian McDermott. Oh, he's lost it. He's lost that. They'll take the first knock on, no advantage. He can't believe it, it's getting tasty out there. Lowe's, as usual, is in the thick of it. This will be St. Helens' feed. This is the one that uh, Gleason. he said back to six, and uh, looking at the replay, that's all right, but you can see the big fella, McDermott, couldn't hold on to his football. Well, it's little to shout about. First 40. 18 minutes, and they're in good voice. Are they ever, and uh, I tell you what, the playoffs, they've come alive tonight. They've been pretty good all the way through, but this, well, this is five-star. Chris Shunt. Game of two halves. I know it's an old no, saying. Off you go. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, that's a bad one, right over the top. He said he was on the chest, but Dermot said I thought it was a good tackle. Cunningham, grounded by McDermott again. Oh, that was right over into the throat. Darren Brick would have felt that. There's the kick from Long. Vinicolo waits and gathers it in. He's done well as Vinicolo. Good chase by Long. They've thrown it at him, kicked it at him all throughout this game, and he's come up trumps on every occasion. He's got a wonderful try in that first half. So well, this is boiling along. A lot better defensive-wise from Saints in the second half, and you can see that the Bradford players are beginning to start losing their cool. They've done it throughout this season on many occasions where they started arguing with the referee instead of getting back to the game plan. Deacon, no. Deacon with a little bit of magic. He's got Robbie Paul. Oh, well, what a minute happened then. He had Gardner on his left, he had Robbie Paul on his right, and he dropped it. Well, he tried to kick it, but he just couldn't get the boot away. Beautiful break. And he must be thinking that the gods are against him. He wanted to kick it, he just lost it. Oh. Oh, who would be a coach, eh? Well, there's a tint of grey there. And there'll be more before this game is out. Well, in the on, final quarter. They were on the phone to the coach companies. They were fixing up the trip at half time. Ooh, that was forward forward a they've, mile. Done it, they've done it twice, and they've been called for a forward pass twice. Why on earth do they do that in their own half yet again? It's Bradford that's come up with it. That is unbelievable that they can... Marvel. Well, we saw a disc into Ward last night uh, to uh, Sinfield. Sinfield to Ward, I'll get it right, yesterday, which I said was uh, schoolboy stuff. Please. Well, they've done two. Well, they picked the lucky box all the way through the second half, but that's not the option. That was the wrong rabbit out of the hat. Cost him. Stankovic and Skullfort. Well, Skullfort will be hoping this doesn't come to anything. McDermott wrestled to the ground by Darren Britt. Lowe's. Deacon. Peacock. And Peacock gets it away to Naylor. Oh, that could have been a penalty against Long. Should have been. This is Fielder. Went down a blind alley there. St. Helens and Paul Skullthorpe have two to survive. Deacon with the kick again. That'll it's be a try! It it's will a try be. for Foreshaw, is it? Again. I think it's Foreshaw over side. there. It is. The I think this will be given. Again, we see the kick. Superb little dink forward. And in this weather, anything can happen. Superb kick yet again. I think it touched it. Saints player on the way through, but I think the ball took the man. They're onside. He's well onside. He took a wicked bounce. Here they come, skidding all over the place. And Gleason really should have gone for the football. And when Albert popped it up, Forshaw said, Thank you very much. We're back in control. Oh, oh, has, he oh has he lost it at the vital moment? I think he has. Oh, dear me. Well, listen oh. to the St. Helens fans in the background. They've just seen this as well. He has lost it. Yeah, 
there's daylight between that, I'm sure. Oh, this will be cruel. This will be cruel for four short. Well, as that ball was kicked through, did you see the spray coming up off the ground? He's lost it. Well, they'll be lucky, but Gleeson nearly paid the price. If it's a try, then Gleeson has paid the price, but I'm going to go for no try. Oh, the try is given. For sure, given benefit of the doubt by David Campbell. He didn't drop it after all. Well, they said he controlled it. He'll be happy with that. And really, the kick was superb, but Martin Gleeson, instead of going for the football, he tries to just stop Forshaw going through. Look at that. He should have gone for it. He should have gone for the football, Gleeson. But you can't take anything away from this fella, the little halfback, Paul Deacon. He has produced some superb kicks. There was no question in the mind of Forshaw. It all came from this absolute stupid play. That's the only word for it. Stupid. Remember Deacon, the man who's about to convert, or willing. Either way, he knocked on, line at his mercy. And he misses. The pressure is getting to everybody. 28-22, though, the ball's ahead. He can't believe it. Well, well, for sure, it didn't come out of his grasp. Not according to uh, the video referee. But to be fair, they needed a little stroke of luck, but it was worth it. He's a big grin on his face. And to think two years ago, many people thought that he was finished, done. Well, it's 28-22. It's a converted try, the gap. And we haven't had a drawn game in the playoffs in the history of the playoffs of the Super League. So are we on the verge of an extra time? And the extra time would be 10 minutes each way and then the golden point if it still is level pegging. Well, knowing you, Eddie, you'll put the mocker on everything. One side will probably run away with well, it. From you never know. Yeah, you never know. I know one set of players that will be happy that they're playing extra time and that'll be Wigan. Oh, yes. They'll want them to run for uh, the golden point, won't they? Saints, of course, have got to score a converted try, and then, well, they've got to hold on. And it, in a match like this, anything, literally anything, can happen. But Bradford, that try has lifted their spirits. They're hunting again. They're flying in in the tackle. And it was a veteran for sure that provided that lift. Skullthorpe's gone for a big 40-20, but he hasn't got the angle right. He's Long split. is leading the way. He split the winger and the uh, the full back. Oh, great stuff! What a run from Sean Long. He came from an onside position. Oh, Sculthorpe sneaked it up with us. And that's one on one. What a great play from Sculthorpe. This they, is coming up. They're he miles offside. None of them's got back the ten. He's allowing the advantage. It's Robert Connolly. Coming up. Gives it to Bridge. Just short. Cunningham again, gets the ball away, lost it, dropped, dropped by Yonkers, knock on. Well, they allowed the advantage, and they had their chance, and they've come up with a mistake yet again. This is tense. Wonderful effort, though, from Sculthorpe, but was the tackle completed? No. According to the official Robert Connolly, he agrees with Eddie, and then they came up with that big mistake. But Withers and Forshaw... Some of the defence here tonight has been outstanding. Withers has taken a knock. He has. He knows the game long enough to know that uh, let's just stop the momentum a little bit. I'm not being cruel to the man, but uh, oh, the tension. Well, Ian Millwood's just been downstairs. He's made a change. Uh, Ward has gone off and Mickey Hyam has come on. And it's amazing. He did not want to use a walkie-talkie. He wanted to make sure that the right message got out. Ten Bradford head and feet at the scrum. Four short to try and relieve the pressure. He knows he can't just hang on any. He knows the capabilities of this St. Helens side to snatch a victory in the dying minutes. Oh, that could be the killer. Fielden with the mistake. Cunningham with the run. He's had such a wonderful game as Stuart Fielden, but that could be a costly mistake. Mickey Hyam. 
That's the first. Remember, the opening tackle was the zero. Here is Darren Britt. Big hit by Barry and Brian McDermott. Scothorpe's a key. Will he throw the dummy? No, he'll give it to Long. Long puts it out wide to Newler. And Newler on his back and held up by Nathan McAvoy. Stewart to Long. Long. Oh, awful pass. Well, it looks as though you're going to opt for the kick. And I think that's what his coach was hoping for, too. I think that's what all the players on his inside were waiting for. Well, it was a relieved Stuart Fielding that dropped on that loose ball then. Remarkable thing about the Bradford scoreline, Steve. Oh, they've scored five tries, all five from kicks. And that's a key factor. It's what got Saints back in the game. This is Vinacolo. It was a kick from Long that allowed Cunningham to get that try. Well, there's been pen plenty of controversy in this match. We knew it was going to be tough. Oh, didn't expect this. This is the last tackle, says Robert Connolly. There's the kick over the top. Anthony Stewart will collect this for the Saints. A black wall has arrived. Good chase. Great chase. Basics. That's what we're going through all the players' minds. Keep it to the basics. Make sure we get the six. See if we can get the roll on. Oh, he, lost it. he tried to get yeah. that ball away, did Stewart. And uh, McAvoy's pinched it. Here's Lowe's. Twist and turns. How Fielding. many? Why on earth did Stewart try to offload there? It just wasn't on. Chris Joint wasn't running Dude. under the football. He was stood. He was anticipating to play the ball. Brian McDermott. Will he go for the one point, perhaps? I think I've been thinking about it, Eddie. Robbie Paul. Four tackles gone. Two this set of six remaining. Lowe's waits at dummy half. Deacon's back there. They go down the short side with Peacock. And Peacock drives them to within a couple of metres of the line. That's the last. Will they go one point? I don't think so. Well, Deacon has positioned himself way out wide. And that ball is just helped over the dead ball line by Wellens. Should be on the 22. This will be interesting. Yes, 22 metres. A restart. He did the right thing. Right like coming and taking quickly. Here's yeah. Long. He did it right. And he got it right with the official. Hyen. Scampers away. Mickey Hyen. Wrestled to the ground by Lowe's. I don't think I've ever felt as much tension in a game for years, Ed. Just a reminder of the Australian Grand Finals in the morning, 9.30 Sky Sports 2, the Roosters and the Warriors. If it's as good as this, it's worth getting up early on the Sunday morning for. Why it goes from Skullthorpe again? What a hit from the volcano! Oh, oh, Darren Albert said, what hit me? Skullthorpe's kick, picked up by Withers, gathered in safely. Hyen. Just bobbled a little bit from the fullback there, but he was quite happy to scoop it to his chest. Hyen and Stankovic completing the tackle. Here's Brian McDermott again. I just wonder whether the Bulls made that big error upfield, Eddie, when they could have gone for that one point. That'll be vital, wouldn't it? Well, it means that Saints would have to score twice as it is now. They're just a converted try away. And it's with Peacock. Well, if anyone have got to be solid in defence, that's four. If anyone's going to uh, steer the Bradford Bulls home, it's the hooker, Jimmy Lowe's. He has controlled things out beautifully. And the kicking game from this fella Deacon has been great too. That's Look at him kick. bobble around. That's a super kick, and Darren Albert has work to do. He's given it to Wellens. <laughs> Wellens is trapped in goal. That was dodgy. Darren Albert, it was very dodgy. <laughs> Carter is hunting. Yeah, ball carrying arm. He's got it right as the official. Saints fans, they're booing. They thought that uh, Fielding came in on a flop, but the... The dead in goal had already been completed. Cost in to McDermott. Here they come again. Oh, what a hit! Darren Mr. Britt. Mr. Britt says welcome. Last ten. Deacon. Wide it goes to McAvoy. McAvoy back it goes. Went backwards. Oh, and he just holds the jaw, Peacock. I don't Deacon, think, this is with us. I don't think Bradford will make the second mistake. They'll drive Please, for the six, go, surely. Stay, stay, stay. That one point is so desperate for them. This is for sure. 
He knows the way towards the sticks. One more, surely they'll go for the drop. Deacon's there, here's the drop goal attempt. He's pushed it wide. Went early in the tackle count. He's pushed it wide, Deacon. They are the tactics that you needed, though. You can see there they applied no pressure because it wasn't the last. Deacon opted to go early, and he just went to the left. Yonkers takes that first tackle. This is Mickey Hyam. Oh, went backwards. Drop down. Knock on is the touch judge's call. Ooh. Hyam cannot believe it. He said he went backwards, and now it's Saints' turn to lose their cool. I was facing the post, says Mickey Hyam. And he was. Come on, Bryson, Kieran. That's what he's doing. Won't hurt. Won't help you, young, young fella. And it was, oh, it was whipped away by Jimmy Lowe's, and he's got away with it. And even so, it went backwards. Well, there's lots to talk about. And they will talk about this for a long, long time to come. This entire night at Nosley Road. It's been unforgettable. Well, I bet the two corners Knock the on. Oh. Knock on this time by Robbie Paul. It's not been his night. Not by Noble. And Robbie Paul, and he just lost it. Lost control. Again. Slippy oh, conditions. Team effort. And yet he's the type of player, Eddie, that could just win it for Bradford all Absolutely. on his own. Absolutely. He, he can come up with something superb. But as it is, they have got away with it yet again. Off goes Timmy Yonkers, on comes Peter Shields. Well, Clarkie, stay, I, Clarkie, stay I hate to ask you this. Who's, who's going to win? I'll tell you what, the one team you don't want to be chasing you with less than 10 minutes to go is St. Helens. And the Bradford Bulls do look incredibly nervous. When in possession, they've lost the shape, they've lost the pattern. And yet another mistake here now from St. Helens. I think we can only put it down to the atrocious conditions. And maybe the desperation now with which St. Helens are trying to play this game. Just tries to get up and get that quick play of the ball. He knows his side need to get onto a roll, get out of their own half and get into good field Second position. In, They've just gifted now the Bradford Bulls a chance to attack and maybe just strike that killer punch. Yes, a killer blow needed by Bradford. And uh, just a try from Saints would be good enough. And is that back to zero? It is. Zero. Yes, it is. He's only got a hand zero. to it. They're desperate now, Saints, to get this possession. And that's why I keep pointing to that man, Jimmy Lowe's, who just control things, calm it down, say, come on, now it's uh, the volcano that's gone in. That's good work. Two. Let's go. And there's Lowe's. Come this way to Deacon. St. Helens tried to close him down in case he thought of the one-pointer. Bradford move it wide. This is with us. Back it goes. Peacock. Three. Cut down. He was hunting all the way then, joint. Stay, stay. With us again to Robbie Paul. On it goes to McDermott who puts the ball down. Look forward. Well, he's got six points to play with. Is Brian Noble. The clock is just ticking away. And it is becoming atrocious out there. Engine. Ten minutes uh, after the kickoff of this game, the rain started to come down. We have a live grand final preview program for you friday the 18th at seven on sky sports 2 we're live from old trafford on the night and then we're live from old trafford the next night for the main event and who's going to be there great run from cunningham the two grand final coaches will be joining us on the night at old trafford on the eve of the big game and you could write a book about this match and i'm sure that both coaches probably will they'll have plenty to say Scalthorpe with a high kick in these conditions, good tactics. That's coming back towards St. Helens. Flick back, Long with the kick again. And he's chasing it as Mickey Hyam. Mickey Hyam traps with us in goal. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Five to go. And what a kick on the pressure from this fella. Saints fans say go, go, go. They've seen it all before. Well, they are royally entertained at this ground. We all are when we come to Saints, and indeed when we see Bradford. Eddie, they were done at half-time. Oh, it was finished. all over. They were finished. I'd written them off. Everyone had. But you? <laughs> I just said I wondered whether it was in the script. I'd never believed it would happen again. It hasn't happened yet, of course. Bradford's still ahead. Four minutes and a little bit. 
15,100. It's a full house at Knowsley Road. And he, every one of them have watched a classic. It might have a little bit more to run. Cunningham. Three. Eight. Here's Long. This is Shields. Long takes over. He finds Scottford. The men out wide. Newland. Stewart. It's the try. It's the try for Stewart. He'll go to the screen, though. He'll want to make sure. Second try for Stewart for me. But he has to go to the screen, Eddie. In such circumstances, he slides. That's a try. You got it right, Eduardo. They are doing it again, but it's way out wide. This is a difficult conversion. Here's a decision to confirm it. A kick away from extra time. We're a kick away from an extra ten minutes each way. And Paul Scunthorpe, what a kick this is. I can't watch. Well, if he converts this and we do go into extra time, you've got to say that the momentum has turned around and the Saints, they've got the roll on. And full credit to official Robert Connolly, in such circumstances, it means so much. It means going straight to the grand final. What a pressure kick. Oh. The man of steel, he'll need nerves like a man of steel. What a night for this fella. Well, he's a man banging form, Steve-O, because he's kicked ten goals in a match three times in the last eight weeks of this season. But this one is his biggest kick of his life. Bradford fans biting their nails. Saints have got the prayer mats out. Scalpel! He's missed it! He's Scott got one! has missed it! Talk about the pressure. He looks calm, cool and collected. So does he. But inside... Oh, they must be doing an Irish jig inside the stomach. Both of them. Remember... Remember... I always that night, remember. when Chris Joint came up with the win in the last minute, St Helens have got to cover the ground again. It was on this ground, it was against this opposition, and St. Helens came up with a try of all time. Can they do it again? What a game. Two years ago, but Saints were going up the other end then. And remember, early in the match, it was Sculthorpe that missed an easy conversion. This is Cunningham. He offloads to Long. They're on the boil, seconds remaining. They've got to throw the dice, they've got to go for everything, Saints. Here they go, long to Newland! Oh! That was a forward pass. Oh, he's in a play on! What on earth is happening? It's anybody's ball, play on! Play on play again, on. play on, touch play, play on. on! This is farcical! Wide from Cunningham! That's Gleason! Oh, 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 Gleason's pass was on its way to the front row of the stand. He thought that his winger was going to stay outside, but Darren Albert had just started to come back on the inside, as a good winger perhaps should have done. This is earlier. To me, this was a forward pass. How this was allowed to be continued on is beyond belief. There was a knock on there, a knock on here, a knock on everywhere. And he knows that that is it. It will be on the jumper time now. The combination between the centre Gleason and Darren Albert. It'll be the balls that'll hang on to this. Don't you worry about that. They've got 30 seconds. They've got 30 seconds. They'll have cramp. They'll have all sorts of injuries. And they'll run from dummy half. They will not risk the pass. Costin should go on his own. Costin will. And so will those. 15, 16 seconds. Oh, he's passed. This is Vinacolo. That's the last. What if it had gone into touch there? Kick it straight over the stun. Which and he Lowe's does. will do. It's 
turn over that made it. The Bradford Bulls are at Old Trafford. What a match. Celebrations for the Bulls on the sideline. We have seen another classic here. St. Helens now have to come back next week and they have to play the team that's beaten them three times this year. They have to play Wigan on this ground next Friday night. Bradford are at Old Trafford for the grand final of 2002. They will defend their title at the Theatre of Dreams. What a game. 24-4, the Bulls were home and hosed at half-time. Never home and hosed against the Saints. 26-28, but Paul Deakin wins the Tiso Watches Man of the Match. He's here with Bill. Paul, congratulations, there you go. There's your watch. How are your nerves? <laughs> I don't know if I deserve this, because I nearly lost it for us with the missed goals and drop goals, but what a game. I mean, I don't think we're used to playing in the wet. So many spilled balls, both sides, but... You know, it's a close one again. Well done, Paul. Congratulations. Thanks for that. Thanks for the T-saw. Coach Brian Noble's just joined us. How about your nerves? Oh, they're fine now. <laughs> now it's over. <laughs> the worst are going after the start of that second half. We just... I can't remember us completing the same in the second half. We just... The reverse of exactly the reverse of what we did in the first half. But, but you must have expected that in a way. Oh, yeah, but we, we had the wind in the second half, would you believe? And we still didn't kick early, so we're going to have to make messages a little bit clearer at half time. But I'm delighted for the players that they had to dig deep because they've got a bit of a roll on like we've got a bit of a roll on. And uh, it's a great win for that mental toughness we talked about. And they're in another grand final they deserve to be. Old Trafford, here we come then. Yeah, well, we're there now. We can have a look at what we did right and what we did wrong and take a few days off and let Saints and Wigan bash each other up. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Bill. Phil Clark. That was exhausting just watching it, wasn't it? What a game. I think basically we're all divided into three categories. Those who make things happen, those who watch what happens, and those who wondered what happened. I think Saints were the former and Bradford the second, the latter really, in that uh, second half. But St. Thomas probably gave themselves just a little bit too much to do in the second half. Wonderful, wonderful game. Seven of the nine tries coming from kicks, probably a testimony to the quality of defence on show here. Yeah saw some wonderful play from both teams and when St. Helens start to run from dummy half like they did in that second half they become almost unplayable luckily for Bradford they had just enough of a lead thanks Phil you think this was some game we've still got St. Helens against Wigan to come to decide who meets the Bulls in the grand final can't wait no neither can